hey guys welcome back to the channel all right so we are going to be continuing uh, setting up our uh, galera cluster reference architecture and um, if you remember in the last video we managed to set up a three node galera cluster with enabled gtids and uh, and bin logs right um, so we are going to be continuing with that and uh, we are going to continue to set up a max scale node for now and uh, of course uh, in the same session we are going to be setting up a bin log router within the max scale and that should be able to replicate the binary logs from these three nodes into that that particular bin log router folder uh, and that should be intelligent enough to to basically pick the bin logs from one of these nodes and if that node goes down it should automatically be able to switch to another node like uh, node number two or node number three whichever is available it should be automatically able to pick the bin logs from that node so in that regard it's high um, meaning it does provide uh, some some ha high availability that uh, node going down should not stop the bin logs from being captured by this max scale and then of course um, eventually we are going to reproduce the same setup on another data center uh, with a different set of ips and uh, different max scale ip of course and then we are going to be replicating from this max scale whichever is picking up those bin logs to one of the galera nodes on the other side and sim similarly um, from the from the max scale on the other other side we are going to be replicating back to one of these galera nodes so that we have a two-way replication going on and this will give us um, the architecture that we have seen in the uh, in this particular slide right so this is what we are going to achieve finally but for now we are going to go back into our um, sessions um, but before that um, so this is the this is the documentation that I mentioned earlier uh, that I have a github document uh, that basically covers this entire process of setting up this architecture and it does explain something about this architecture as well it's going to set up uh, these three galera nodes and then of course another max scale plus another three galera nodes on on another data center and it's going to be replicating so this basically will let us um, go step by step and from the installation all the way to configuration and max scale and whatnot so everything is covered in this set of documentation and i will be putting up a link to this talk into the videos that i have uploaded um, so for now we are going to jump to the max scale config so max scale we have already installed on our server so this is already done yeah but this is what we are looking for so the max scale config basically if you look at it is is um, basically setting up uh, these three these three servers with a priority of course so this priority uh, will give these servers um, um a choice or, or the highest priority when max scale basically picks up this node as a master or as a primary server so whichever node has the highest lowest number lowest number means the highest priority uh, will be selected as a master uh, for read and write while the other nodes with the lower priority will be selected for read only queries right so that, that's what this this priority basically means and of course um, if you go through one by one all these sessions so anything that you configure within the square brackets is basically the name of that section and we need to make sure uh, that the name is consistent throughout um, and then the type of this section is defined as server so this section basically defines a new server uh, and the address of that server is a is the ip of course and then the port which whichever port that server is currently listening on is 3306 of course the default MariaDB port and then the protocol is going to be using the MariaDB backend protocol and of course the priority is defined as one so similarly the priority two and priority three for the third node um, moving forward we have the galera monitor um, so this this of course is is a type of a monitor and then the module for this monitor is using galera mon so if you remember for the normal master slave or primary replica setup we use uh, MariaDB mon uh, so that max scale knows that uh, max scale is the one going to be doing the database failover and all that stuff will be handled by max scale itself but when we define galera mon so it's a different module so max scale will know how to handle a galera cluster right so based on this module the max scale will know how to handle uh, these three nodes cluster then uh, 
we have the user of course this user we need to create in advance on the db server if if we want to use this config so we of course we need a monitor user um, and then uh, there's a specific set of grants that is required for this user we will see that later on uh, and then the password is hard coded here in the config um, there is a way to to basically uh, encrypt this password so that this password is not visible in the config uh, that i will also show you how to do that um, and then there's a monitor for this uh, or rather interval for this monitor this interval basically means the heartbeat right so how frequently should galera should max scale go back to the backend server and check for health or do a health check status check for all the nodes so this is in milliseconds so every 2000 milliseconds meaning every two seconds this will go back and check and uh, if you look at it this one is basically telling max scale to use the priorities that we have defined earlier when selecting a master node for read and write uh, yeah so so that's that's that um, and available when donor this is something important uh, so this is basically going to be useful only when we are using um uh, MariaDB Maria backup for our SST method. So if you scroll up, um, scroll up to the database config. Um, I hope that is there. Mm. Yeah, I guess it's not it's not defined here because we are expecting it to to use uh, to use rsync. Yeah, I think that's not defined here by default. All right. So anyway, we will we will anyway we will see that later on. I'll show you how to do that. So if we are using SST method um, uh, Maria backup then available when donor means that um, that particular the node that is going to be donating data to the new incoming node uh, that node will be made available by max scale so the max scale will be able to send read and write queries to that but um, if we are using rsync uh, which we are using right now right so if we are using rsync this parameter doesn't make any difference at all so because galera will forcefully move that node out of the cluster and then that node will will not be basically uh, useful for reads and writes anyway so that's that so scrolling down to uh, the to the read and write service uh, again this one is a is a type is a service and the router is read write split router again we are using the same node names that we are going to be using for our reads and writes and uh, the user that's going to be used by galera for for that read and write uh, splitting is again max user same user and of course same password so again uh, the password that we are going to use in the uh, in the galera monitor the same password we will use here because of course that's the default password for this user and we once we have encrypted it the same encrypted password we can use in both places um, and then uh, master reconnection is important is basically will tell max scale to automatically reconnect uh, if let's say the server goes down and then the server comes back online again so max scale should automatically reconnect and similarly if the master goes down uh, max scale should automatically reconnect all the existing connections to the to the new master node with so with this particular parameter set to true uh, the front end or the back end clients whoever is trying to access the database through max scale will never will never get an error message saying that the, the connection is lost or something like that so they they will always maintain a connection to the back end server transaction replay uh, super important and super powerful feature so this means that uh, if if your connections are coming through read and write service and they are running some long large transaction or long big transaction on the master uh, and the master node goes down right so what will happen that through this property maxel will automatically run the same transaction on the on the next uh, available master node right so in this case is basically maxel is giving the very very high level of availability to the application clients and um, and basically preventing any any lost connections or lost transaction and um, similarly the transaction replay uh, retry on deadlock so this is another extension of the transaction replay so this means that if if um, somehow we get a deadlock um, while running a transaction so max scale should automatically retry that transaction by right uh, meaning if of course if we are not using max scale so whenever there's a deadlock the application is required to retry their transition so that logic must be built into the application but um, this is the power of max scale so even if we haven't uh, done any special thing in the application code to to basically retry those transition fail transaction uh, max scale would automatically do that on uh, on on the same available server 
um, this master failure mode is is basically there are a couple of modes there one of the modes says that uh, master should immediately or connection should immediately fail uh, whenever the master node goes down or or whenever there's no more no more nodes available for connection um, or no more masters nodes available for connection uh, but we are going to be using error on right so this means that even if there are no more nodes available uh, max scale will still try to will still maintain the connectivity uh, for the for the end users right for the end users or the application user whoever are connected to the max scale and will only throw error message back to the clients when when they when the user actually tries to write some data to the database because that's what it is uh, error on write uh, so this base this can possibly give some extra time uh, for the to the end users or to the application client that meanwhile while they are while they are not doing anything uh, the database may have already recovered or somebody may have already started up the db server so it, it does gives a bit of uh, higher availability uh, as far as the connection goes and uh, this one the selection criteria there are there are also multiple options there so this one is an interesting one adaptive routing so this means that um, max scale will basically be uh, capturing the statistics of all the response times from all the nodes and whichever node seems to be uh, responding faster maxwell would try to push maximum queries to that node and when that node gets a bit overloaded and then the response time drops even in milliseconds maxwell will try to push the query to the next incoming query to another node whichever node is available right and then of course the finally we have the galera listener uh, and then this the service which this listener is tied to is this galera rewrite service and if you if you look at it this name should be the name that is defined for our rewrite service right so that, that's the same name uh, mentioned here and uh, this is the port that we are using a non standard port not 3306 because that's a recommended method of doing that uh, for security concerns so we are using a non-standard port um, because the default one is 3306 so always try to use a non-standard port um, so in this case uh, as long as the apps are basically trying to connect to the max scale ip and the port they use 44007 they will be connected to this read write service right so and then they will get basically get use of uh, get the benefits of all these feature read and write splitting uh, transaction replay auto connection um, and um, and transaction replay on deadlock of course so all those things will be taken care by the max scale server as long as the users are connected to this port on the max scale ip address all right um yeah so th this is something that i mentioned earlier that the best is to encrypt your password in the max scale or cena file but we are going to keep it simple here in this in this documentation but i will show you how to do that in uh, in the exercise later on um and yeah and of course because if you if you see here we need this new new user to be created on galera uh, and that's what this is max user so we are going to create this user and then we need to grant select privileges on all the mysql.star tables and then we need this uh, additional privilege to to basically be able to show databases so max scale needs to be able to see the databases because it's going to be uh, doing a read and write splitting and and so on all right so let's um let's quickly run this run these queries there on our db server uh, if you see that the ip address are the same uh, we are using a wildcard here so any uh, this this user can connect to the database through any of these hosts and this wildcard will help us uh, so we don't need to do a we don't need to do a percent for all the all the host name but just just uh, the partial percentage is is good enough for us all right so let's scroll down to this session so these are the three db servers for us um all right so let's do minus u root so we are there and then we are going to i wonder if i've already created this user uh let's see uh, let's see if i can copy that one more time yeah all right so this one identified by secret password okay so i didn't create this user anyway we will verify that one more time um and then of course we need to run these grants for this user yeah here so we have the select grant given and then finally we need to grant show databases all right 
and then if you do a select user comma host from mysql dot user all right so yeah so we have max user created of course with the grants that we wanted let's verify the grants very quickly um show grants for this guy Alrighty, so we have a grant to this user for show databases and then we have the grant to do a select on mysql.star to this user. Okay, so I think our, our setup is all there. Um, and now we should be able to set up our VI. This is our max scale node. Host name, yeah, max scale. VI max scale.cnf file um let's let's delete everything we don't need any of this stuff so i'm going to clean up this thing and um we are going to copy everything because this one is um perfectly fit for our our server setup and exactly what we want all righty so insert and then paste everything here all right so i think we are done mm, yeah so we have secret password for max user and everything is good all right um so let's say we'll just verify whether all the nodes are running minus u root yes it's running minus u root all right so it looks like everything is running so let's try to um broadcast to the group and if we do a show global status like ws rep cluster size all right okay perfect so all the nodes are reporting three three node cluster size that's great now because our max scale or cnf is set up uh, we should be able to restart the max scale server and yep it started restarted successfully and then we should be able to do max CDRL list services and then we have one rewrite service currently running on these three nodes that's good and max CTRL list servers finally to see what are the servers in the cluster okay perfect so we can see that um we have three three nodes running on the cluster and um and yeah there seems to be something some problem with this node it doesn't have the 28 uh that particular gdid I wonder why is that uh, let's try to do some transaction here use test DB show tables uh, let's say let's say not not from all the sessions. we will just do it from one session uh, first off tab to like tab all right let's see let's do watch here so that this guy keeps refreshing this output okay there seems to be something wrong with this cluster right now so it it somehow it doesn't have um all the transition or all the gtids i wonder why is that okay uh no worries uh let's let's try to do something here right so we will quit from here and i am going to do a force ssd right so that's something that uh, we we talked about earlier we will see how force ssd is done so i'm trying to synchro i'm going to synchronize this this particular node with uh, with the cluster so it seems like there's something wrong with this cluster it doesn't have all the gt ideas that's that's weird but anyway it's good that we have this scenario so that we can see how to synchronize the class the node to the remaining cluster right so we are going to do a stop mariadb right so the node is the node is stopped now okay and uh, if we go to the data directory var log mysql not log sorry it should be lib 
wirelib mysql and then we have everything here okay so i am going to rm minus rf um slash wire lib mysql slash slash star so remember we need to delete the contents of the data directory not the data directory itself right so that's why i have wirelib mysql slash star so i'm deleting everything within the data directory all right so it's going to ask me why yes i want to delete everything so now if we check if you check the folder here the data directory is totally empty now so if i do a start start mariadb server here you just monitor uh, what happens to this output so you will see one of the node goes into running mode so meaning that is no longer a part of the cluster and that's that's basically the one donating that the entire data set to the to this this particular node so this is called a force sst or force system state transfer right so let's do that and see whether we get synchronized uh, gtids all right so it's starting and then you see that this node becomes the donor node the master is still maintained and then the data has been already donated and this one is started and yeah there it is so now we can see the gtids are all in sync so that's what we wanted to see um so something might have made went wrong i don't know what um because i have been playing with this setup for some time so i might have done something that i was unaware of but anyway this is this is the easiest way to synchronize a node to the remaining cluster so very very simple just simply stop the server and remove the data directly contents and start it up and then the cluster will take care of uh, synchronizing uh, this new this this particular node uh, and treat it as a new node and synchronize everything to it all right perfect okay so we are good to go for now so uh, let's do some some basic testing uh, because our max scale is running right so we want to test uh, whether uh, the failover and everything is working fine so because this one is the current master right now so if we do a system serial stop my adb it should immediately pick up this node as a master that you saw so there's no lag at all as the moment this node goes down the second node is selected as a master right so this is the power of galera because if we have a normal master slave or primary replica setup uh, galera or uh, the max scale will basically need to um, wait for the replication to complete and then it will basically run a change master command on all the nodes uh, to point to this node disable the read only mode on this server so a lot of things have to have to be done in the back end uh, but since galera is all master nodes is all the nodes are already master or all the nodes are already primary nodes so max scale just need to point to the other node as a master right so it it doesn't need to do anything at all so as soon as it detects this node is down it will basically just use the priorities whatever priorities we have defined and based on the priorities it will just simply go to that node and um, and pick it up as a master node so similarly if i stop this node as well stop my db it should pick up the other one as a master right so that's what it that's what it's doing so very very fast now if we start the first node up you will see that that node becomes a master immediately yeah there is no lag at all so as soon as the node comes up it becomes the master within the same split second start node let's start all the nodes up so that we have a proper cluster running all right perfect um yeah so the all the nodes are all the nodes are there everything is synchronized um that's great now we will go back to our documentation and then uh, we are gonna uh, this one this part we already done of course so it's working fine and yeah so this is what we want to do now um so we want to define the bin log router um within the max scale server itself right so that's what we are going to do now um yeah Okay, so this is basically just showing you meaning meaning what what to expect when you have a properly running max scale and properly running cluster all right so i'm going to copy this config um or maybe before that so this replication proxy is is the bin log router so that that we can tell by the router name so the router we are going to use is uh, bin log router the previous router if you remember the one we have seen is uh, the read write split router because that routes the connection to to master and slave nodes for read and write splitting and this router 
uh, is basically routing your binary logs that's why it's called a bin log router and the servers that is going to be routing uh, logs from are the three galera nodes that we have and expired log days is is basic log duration is basically the same as your servers expired log days parameter which which tells like for how many days do we want to keep the bin logs so anything older than 72 hours will be purged away from the server but uh, over here we also have additional parameter that says expired log minimum files that is three so this means that even if the even if uh, the logs are older than 72 hours but we only have three files left in the server so it's not going to push those files away so it will maintain a minimum of three files in the cluster as long as we have more than three files in the in the server and the file become older than 72 hours max scale will push those away but it will try to maintain at least the last three files in the in the server select master equals to true so this is what we talked about earlier that max scale will automatically select a master node to to collect bin logs from out of these three nodes right so if you may have a five node cluster so you can define those five nodes here and then we tell max scale for this router service to to pick up a master automatically and this is a this is the replication user that we want to create as well uh, just like the the monitor user we have created max user and the read split user we have created similarly we need to create a replication user just like we would create a replication user for our uh, master slave replication right so this bin log router service is basically going to act like a normal master slave service right so you can read through all this documentation it has a lot more explanation so but we are not going to go to, into all that detail and also yeah so once once this is defined this user and password is defined then we have the listener of course just like we had a listener for our read write router right so this read write uh, galera read write service we had a listener that points to that same service on a different port so that the end users can connect to this port to make use of galera read write service similarly for this service this router we also have a listener so that when we want to uh, connect uh, the the external galera, galera nodes from the second data center to this bin log router they will be connecting to the 4008 port we will see uh, meaning we will do that and then we will see what what i mean basically so i'm going to copy this and um, we quickly go to going to go there and uh, i'm going to just open up another session here on the right side we will leave this guy running and i'm going to go to my 70 server which is my max scale and vi slash etc max scale dot cl file so i'm just going to go to the end of this file and uh, insert and just paste this config here all right so so that's that i think we are done with that already and uh, if i save and exit and quickly restart max scale service here we will see that this this guy refreshes very quickly yep and it started already and then everything back to normal so the max scale restarted and this should have already started our bin log router so let's take a quick look at the services that are currently running um, systemctl um, list services system not systemctl sorry i'm a bit tired right now max ctr yeah so now we can see that we have this uh, original read write service running and then we also have this proxy replication proxy running that is running a bin log router service and then this bin log router service is basically currently using uh, or routing uh, bin logs from these three nodes all right and then we can also check max ctrl list listeners this one yeah, so we have the Galera listener on 4007. This is where our normal um, JDBC or other clients will connect to uh, to do their transactions. Uh, but our replication router is listening on 4008 port number and is currently running. All right. And um, if we go to var lib max scale folder, we will see that there's a new folder here, bin logs. So let's go to that folder, bin log. And we will see that um, this folder will start to capture the bin logs from this cluster right so let's do a very quick test here um, mydb minus u root and um, let's say show databases we have a test database uh, use 
stb show tables insert into tab 2 select um, select let's say or we will do that insert it tab to c1 only under this column select c1 from tab limit 10 right so we are going to just select 10 rows from our own main table and insert into tab 2 all right so 10 rows inserted and then we should see a gtid is increasing here yeah so 30 30 all throughout the cluster so now that we have a consistent gtid and if on the on this max scale server let me increase the size a little bit font size yeah so on this folder if we do a ls uh, we don't have anything why let's verify why didn't we get any bin logs here um so if we go back to this folder uh, let's check let's check the yeah let's let's verify the um the log folder for the max scale cd var log max scale and we'll do a cat of max scale dot log file all right so we do have some problem access denied to replication user wow okay so obviously uh, because <laughs> we forgot to create this replication user but we did start our replication service all right so that's bad um let's do that now um all right so we'll go to our documentation again and i am going to just simply copy this guy and and we are going to run it on any node that we want doesn't really matter so the user is created and then of course we want to do this on the set of grants that that is required for this setup yep replication slave and replication client and show databases so all those grants are given oops and then um we also want to grant this select all right let's do that okay so everything is done um so we are going to be restarting max scale service so that it can re try to reconnect um to that user okay so reconnected so if we do uh if we cat the log now yeah so now we don't have any more errors so everything looks normal to me let's see if we get any um yeah if we get any any error message or anything yeah so we got a warning about the max gui we don't really care about that right now um but everything else seems to be fine let's let's quickly go to our uh, our data folder cd bin log and we should see bin logs there now yeah absolutely so as expected we have a bunch of bin logs already downloaded from our cluster meaning whichever belongs are available previously because we have been doing a lot of stuff restarting server here and there so everything has been captured here basically so now we can see that everything that have, we have been doing are meaning max scale is basically pulling these bean logs from the 71 server 71 is being our uh this this guy right so this guy so it's picking up everything from this node and if we take a look at take a look at the contents of this bin log file mysql bin log minus v and we should be able to see that our insert statement of those uh, that the one we did here 10 rows right so that should have been captured here in this um let's scroll up a little bit and yeah of course we can see that insert into tab t2 so we see that there are 10 rows 10 rows have been captured uh, which were inserted by our insert statement and that was the complete transaction here um, but because we did a minus v for mysql bin log this this output is basically from the minus v it's not really captured in the output in the bin log file but this is just because we wanted a verbose output so it's just showing us exactly what that uh, what this block this bin log block actually means right so that's what that's what it's showing us so it's confirmed that everything that we we did is actually captured in the bin log so now let's do one more thing just to make sure that our max scale bin log router high availability or or rather our uh, slash max scale uh, our this particular config that we say that we we want this bin log router to be able to replicate from all these three nodes is really taking 
or is really happening or not right so what we're going to do now is um, stop my DB we are going to stop this okay before that let's do one more thing uh, let's do let's do a transaction from this node right so previously we have done it from here let's do it from from this node now so we are going to do the same thing but instead of limit uh, 10 we are going to do a limit one okay um, limit one but before that use test db and then in the same line we're just going to do that insert into tab two. All right so um, the insert has happened but this time if you remember we have done it on the uh, on the server select host name we have done it on the galera 72 um, so if we check for the logs and let's uh, quickly pull pull the data from this 18 because this is the new log created but you see it's still 71 it's not 17 anymore it's, it's meaning it's not 72 the logs are still from 71 node let's let's check it out and yes we can see that number of rows one the insert statement has been captured here already the word whatever we inserted it has been captured there okay so regardless from wherever we run max scale is basically the milog router is basically picking up the data from galera one because uh, they are all synchronizing with each other because being galera that's what they do uh, so whatever we do on any node is actually captured by other nodes bin logs right so that's how we configured our bin our galera cluster to be to have um, local bin logs for log slave updates and all that stuff so that's what is happening now okay now we we want to see whether uh, it's able to pack, capture bin logs from another node right so how do we do that system cdl stop Maria DB, we are going to stop this node so now that that node is no longer available um, let's try to do a transaction from this node again and we will just try to insert three rows now all right so two uh, or two rows two rows inserted let's do a ls now listen now oh uh, yeah absolutely perfect so that's what we expected so now you see that this time is is basically getting data from the node 72 galera 72 because uh, that is the next available node in the list right so that's what it is it's doing and similarly we will as always we will verify mysql bin log minus v for verbose output i want to check this and yep we can see the number of rows too so that the two insert statement have been captured meaning it's one transaction basically but affecting two rows that's why it's showing us two insert statement independently or individually right okay great so quickly uh, starting this node up let it start minus u root oops i really am tired okay my db yeah use uh, test db and uh, i'm going to insert that one more time insert yeah so this time i'm going to insert three rows okay so three rows inserted so let's do ls again and um, yeah so now it is it is still getting from 72 because that's what it has selected for now and is able to meaning is it, it will continue to get the bin logs from that node now so let's take a quick look whether these three three uh, rows inserted is actually captured in in this bin log right so let's do that mysql bin log minus v and yes indeed so those three rows are captured here okay perfect so i think our bin log setup is fine uh, everything looks great um no problems here at all um so we are able to shut down the nodes and then max scale is automatically able to switch or select the new master whenever it can so now if we restart our max scale service i i'm i'm sure that it, it will go back to selecting data from galera one because that's uh, available again but it doesn't really matter because um, as far as um, nodes are concerned all the nodes are 100 percent identical in in a galera cluster and um, that that's the that's basically the promise from the galera node galera itself all right so our setup is done um, everything is working fine uh, now the next step would be to basically re replicate this setup on uh, on another set of data on other set of databases um, if we scroll up um, to 
yeah so this primary data center we have already done with this set of config if you remember we have this these set of ips configured and all these things uh, to have a consistent gt ids and consistent servers and uh, galera domain id everything is defined to use 71 and 72 and 73 uh, but on the dr data center we are going to be configuring another set of servers 81 82 83 and then uh, of course the uh, the server IDs will be 8,000 8, for that particular cluster and then the WSRDB domain will is going to be 80 uh, so that we have a totally independent separate Galera cluster running that has nothing to do with this cluster uh, the one we have configured here on our on the, on the current setup and then once that is there that is done we will configure the max scale one more time uh, with um, with these nodes right so with these nodes to monitor so I am just simply going to copy the config that I have on the other MaxQL server and uh, we are we are going to start that up and then we will we will again we will configure our uh, bin log router over there as well um, and then hopefully yeah hopefully everything would work fine so first first thing what we, what we are going to do is uh, when we configure our our three nodes over there on the second side we are simply going to define or we are simply going to get get them to start pulling data from our um from our this max scale server right so we will immediately define one of the nodes as a slave to this to this bin log router service and uh, they should they should basically get everything that we have done so far in this server including all the user ids and um, all the passwords and all the tables and all the databases that we have created and all the data so they should immediately get everything that we have done in this cluster so far and synchronize it through the binlog router asynchronous service into that uh, second galera cluster then we don't really have to create any user accounts over there because those user accounts should already been already have been replicated from here through our binlog service we will just simply um, simply configure max scale using the same user ID and same passwords and then uh, start start configuring this node the galera 71 node as a slave to the other bin log router right to the, to the bin log router that has been configured on the on the dot 80 dot uh, 80 server all right cool um so i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, i'm going to stop this video now and then we will see you in the next session where we we actually configure the the remaining of the cluster to get to uh, what we eventually want to see is this particular picture right so this particular architecture we are continuing we are going to continue setting up that and i think we can do that in one single video uh, because we don't need to do a lot so i'm just going to um, pre-configure that that environment and uh, start it up and then start the start the session from that point onwards so that you know exactly what it is required what what's basically required to get this this setup going all right guys uh, talk to you later enjoy bye bye